Hey guys, do you like funny video game quotes? Well, check out my book, A Winner Is You, the funniest video game quotes with snarky commentary. It has everything from A Winner Is You, All Your Base Belong To Us, and, especially, Are You A Bad Enough Dude To Save The President, and a lot more. So make sure to check out the book in the link below, and if you purchase the physical version from Amazon, you get the Kindle version completely for free. It's one hell of a bargain, so check it out in the link below. Take care. Hey guys, Captain Ryan here, broadcasting all the way from the popcorn rocket here in space. And there was a fight that was final. Yeah. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Final Fight. Yeah. Yeah. So the immortal arcade classic, Final Fight, which was supposed to be the final battle, the last showdown, but we all know that final in video games means nothing because there's so many sequels to Final Fight and Final Fantasy, but yes, Final Fight is actually the first fight! Mind blown! So my first exposure to Final Fight was actually not the arcade version because I never saw Final Fight in the arcades. Even to this day, I still have not seen Final Fight in the arcades. I played the Super Nintendo version first, and I didn't exactly play the Final Fight arcade version until I downloaded it for MAME, and then I bought all those compilations that came out for the PS2 and PS3. Yeah, so playing the original arcade version of Final Fight is definitely not difficult, but most of my exposure as a kid was to the Super Nintendo version, which I played endlessly. The story of Final Fight is former wrestler Mike Hagar becomes the mayor of crime-ridden Metro City. Because cities called Metro City are always filled with crime in video games and television, especially in the 80s and 90s. I think people should start moving away from Metro City. So after Mike Hagar becomes the mayor of Metro City, the evil Mad Gear gang, which controls all of the crime in the city, are like, So Mike, we're gonna send you quite a bit of money, you know, basically bribing you, so you can look the other way just like the other mayor did. Yep, the previous mayor was a corrupt politician. I wonder who it was. But because Hagar refuses, they kidnap his daughter Jessica. Oh no, what did they do to her? So Jessica's boyfriend Cody and Cody's buddy Guy, along with Mayor Mike Hagar, go through the slums of Metro City in order to get Jessica back. Now one thing about the Super Nintendo version that pretty much everybody talked about was where the fuck was the two player? Of course, I do understand Final Fight for the Super Nintendo was a very early Super Nintendo game. I think it was one of the launch titles, I'm not sure, but it was definitely one of the early games. And I assume Capcom didn't exactly have the time to figure out how to make it two player, because you know, two player games, especially Final Fight, because the two player was kind of a staple of the series in the arcade and not having two player was kind of like, okay. So I can imagine households in 1991 were like, well, sorry, I'm playing Final Fight now, but isn't it two player? No. And also in the arcade version, you had three characters to play as Guy, Cody, and Hagar. But in the Super Nintendo version, we're missing somebody. We're missing some kind of guy. What's his name? Oh, Guy. And of course, due to Capcom's limitations with the first Final Fight game on the Super Nintendo, Guy is totally excluded, but he is playable in another version called Final Fight Guy, which was only available in Blockbuster Video, which I never saw, even though I went to Blockbuster Video quite often. 
So in Final Fight, you traverse through six levels. Wait, this is five. Oh wait, the Super Nintendo only had five levels, I'm sorry. Five levels in the Super Nintendo version, and six levels in the original arcade version. So just beating up those dirty Mad Gear gang members off the streets in order to rescue your precious Jessica. And there were quite a lot of changes from the arcade version to the Super Nintendo version. And of course, aside from the missing level and guy missing, so there were some female thugs named Roxy and Poison who were actually replaced with like two generic guy villains, you know, because probably Capcom was thinking, you know, beating woman is bad. Well, it is, but you know, you have Chun Li and Street Fighter. One of my favorite things about the Super Nintendo version of Final Fight is Cody and Hagar, when they actually do like a special attack, they go, Yeah! yeah. And back when I was a kid, I used to say, Yeah! Yeah! I used to answer questions, Yeah! Yeah! I never get tired of saying, Yeah! So, Ryan, do you like Final Fight? Yeah! So you beat up a variety of thugs, you know, a bunch of thugs just kind of sitting there minding their own business. You just have to be assholes and beat the shit out of them because, you know, they're part of the Mad Gear gang. And then after that, you got thugs, you know, in radiation jackets who are really fast. And then you have, you know, the Elvis lookalikes who block all your fucking hits and hit you really hard, which really sucks. And then you got the big fat dudes like G. Oriber, Bill Bull, and Wong Hu. Oh man, when you throw these guys into each other, that must fucking hurt. And then you got Elgato and Hollywood. You know what, Hollywood? I'm gonna kick your ass back to Hollywood. Oh crap, Hollywood's packing some heat, man, with all those flaming Molotov cocktails. Holy shit. And then you have the Ondors, totally based on Andre the Giant. God bless his soul. You fight your way through the slums, the subway, nightclubs, the Bay Area, and Uptown. Oh wait, I forgot, there's also an industrial zone. And also, you have these bonus stages where you have to trash a car, which was repeated in Street Fighter 2. I just got this new car, and I can't open it, so I just have to smash it! Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Oh. My. God. Although in the arcade version, it's, Oh. My. God. And then you have the other bonus stage where you have to break glass panes, which actually kind of hit you back, which really sucks, but whatever. And you fight a variety of crazy bosses in Final Fight from Thrasher, aka Damned. Well, Thrasher's pretty damned anyways. Don't you like him, Mon? And then you have the fight Sodom, well, renamed Katana, but I prefer Sodom, who's actually really, really fucking hard in this game. So he fights you in an arena with swords to the death. After that, you fight corrupt cop EDIE, who drops his gum and restores your health. Mmm, tasty. Cop gum. It's filled with justice. And of course, if you're playing the arcade game, you fight Rolento, but if you're playing the Super Nintendo game, you fight Abigail. Hey, Abigail. Oh, I'm calling you Abigail. That's a girl's name. Holy shit! It, oh god, Abigail's really fucking hard. And at the end of the game, you fight Mr. Horace Belger. Oh, hey, wait. He looks like the most refined member of the Mad Gear game. Well, because he's obviously the leader who fights you in his wheelchair, and then he jumps up and fights you with his crossbow and arrow. And of course, throughout the game, you can restore your health with food found in oil barrels. I assume this food is very, very clean, right? If you actually hide food in oil barrels. Oh, hey, they're hiding gold bars and jewels in barrels. Man, the Mad Gear gang thinks of everything. And I do admit, when I first played this game on the Super Nintendo, the bosses of this game were pretty hard, actually starting with Katana, aka Sodom. I remember EDIE being pretty hard because he, you know, he had the gun. Abigail was one tough motherfucker despite his name. You can't exactly walk up to Abigail and grab him or punch him because he gets like really pissed like bald bull and tramples you over. Like what I had to do with Abigail is I had to go up to the top of the screen and use my special whenever he got close and then go back to the bottom of the screen and use my special when he gets close and kind of repeat it, but that does cost you a lot of life, so you might want to have a lot of lives fighting Abigail, hopefully. And also, I remember Belger, like, it was kind of hard to beat him with Cody because you can actually punch away his arrows, but he's actually kind of hard to hit himself. But because Cody can't exactly grab Belger, but actually Hagar can grab Belger, which makes it really, really easy to beat him. And of course, Rolento, who is missing from the Super Nintendo version, is actually pretty fast and he's pretty hard to beat. But if you're playing any of the arcade compilations, you pretty much get unlimited lives. So after you punch Belger out the window and he goes splat, you reunite with Jessica, but Cody leaves and says, 
I'm sorry, Jessica. I wish I could stay here, but I can't rest while evil still roams the streets. And that pretty much what leads Cody to his life of being a convict in later games. So final fight for the Super Nintendo and the arcade. Does it still hold up today? In my opinion, yes it does. Because Final Fight is an awesome arcade classic where you brawl through the streets. And I absolutely love the music in this game. Like the music just fits so well with the uh, with the ruined city atmosphere, the, uh, the whole slum music. Yeah, I'm walking through South Central LA, man. Bring it on, Compton. You know, the memorable bosses, the memorable characters, the memorable gameplay. Yeah, actually with my Super Nintendo, I had a turbo controller. So like Cody was doing like machine gun punches. <laughs> I used to like love backing myself up in the corner, just like unleashing punches and just having all the enemies just walk into the punches and shit. Oh, that was amazing. But also there was a Sega CD version which had CD quality audio and voiceover which uh, sounded kind of like a cross between 80s dubbed anime and a porno. I shit you not. Just listen. Guy, Jessica was kidnapped. Jessica? My sweetheart since childhood. The Mad Gear must pay. She's my friend too. Count me in. And it also had an awesome time attack. And there was also a Game Boy Advanced version, which actually had the characters have dialogue. And you can also unlock Street Fighter Alpha Cody and Guy. Yes, Cody in his prisoner outfit. Final Fight on the go. Final Fight is a true arcade classic which still holds up to this day and I highly recommend you play it. And you can get Final Fight for the Super Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console. You can buy it on a whole variety of Capcom compilations. I mean, it's really hard to miss this game and I highly recommend getting whatever version you can, but mostly the arcade version. But stay away from Final Fight Guy unless you're a collector because it's a bit expensive. Alright guys, so that wraps up this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Final Fight. And is Final Fight awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Final Fight 2! So the first Final Fight was not the final battle after all! Ah, so Final Fight 2. Kind of like a direct to DVD sequel to Final Fight, well, more of a direct to console sequel to Final Fight from the arcade, actually does bring back the two player mode! So you can play with a friend this time, yeah! So the story of Final Fight 2 is one year after the end of the Mad Gear gang. Cody and Jessica go on vacation, Guy resumes his training, and Mayor Hagar returns to Metro City to run Metro City, yeah. But after that, Guy's fiance Rena and her father Gen Ryusai get kidnapped by the Mad Gear Gang again! So Rena's really really good looking sister Maki, who should be implemented in more Capcom fighting games, mm -hmm, calls Mike Hagar asking for help, and then Hagar's like, The Mad Gear are back! They've gone global! Holy shit! So Hagar calls his buddy Carlos, and Carlos is like, Man, I owe you and guys so much. Let me go with you, Mike. Besides, I love kicking ass. Well, but on the Super Nintendo, because, you know, this game was meant for kids. So back in 1993, I was like a huge fan of Final Fight, and then when I heard they were doing a sequel, I was like, Holy shit, I have to get Final Fight 2, man! Final Fight 2 is gonna be like so fucking awesome, and they're bringing back the two-player! Fuck yeah! Because the characters in Final Fight 1 went, yeah. So what do they say in Final Fight 2? No! 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 Yes, they say no! Awesome! I hope in the third game they say maybe so. We'll find out in that review. So Mike Hagar is back, looking more badass than ever. And then you have the lovely Mackie, who's supposed to be the speed character. And then you have Carlos with the sword. Although the sword is like super fucking weak compared to a 2x4. Most importantly, they brought back the two-player! Finally! I mean, I knew Capcom was capable of doing that for the first Final Fight, but, you know, I bet there were probably, you know, development deadlines because they wanted to get it out when the Super NES launched. But now that they have more time, they were able to put back the two-player and have three characters this time! 
And also you can play two player mode A and B, but one of them is the normal mode where you can't hit your partner, but there's the other mode where you can hit your partner. And I remember me and my cousin would always play in the mode where we can hit each other just for fun. And I remember one time, I think in the third level in the Netherlands, when we went up that elevator, my cousin just fucking like used Mackie's like special attack to knock me to the ground just to be an asshole. Uh, good times. Yeah, so the Mad Gear gang has actually gone global. So you're fighting in Europe, Hong Kong, Asia, America, kind of everywhere. And one thing about the Mad Gear gang in this game is... What the fuck is up with their fashion sense? I mean, look at these guys! These punks don't even look human! Although I do love the fat guy, Elick, who actually, like, charges with his, um, tuning forks, and he's like, I'm Blanca's biggest fan! You're in for a shock, dude! The Ondors wear suspenders. That's kind of funny. But yeah, a lot of the punks in this game look very funny. <laughs> oh hey, there's Chun-Li! Hi Chun-Li! And hey, there's Guile! Good to see you, Guile! Although your buddy's kind of part of the Mad Gear gang. If you thought the enemies look funny in this game, holy shit, wait till you look at the bosses. Like, you got a killer chef, you got the army dude, and then you have this guy called Bratkin. And it's kind of funny, in the instruction manual they say, you know, they lured Bratkin to join the Mad Gear gang inside a room full of toys. And now he's bored of those toys. When you actually fight Bratkin, he breaks out of the room. I'm like, oh, come on, Bratkin. I bet Bratkin got bored because you didn't give him all the new Transformers and Ninja Turtle toys. Yeah, that would kind of drive me crazy too back in 1993. And then you actually fight Philippe the Clown. A fucking clown. Oh god, I fucking hate clowns. And then you fight Rolento. Well, he's called Rolent in this game. Thank you, transliterations. But yeah, you fight Rolento, who is missing from the first Final Fight SNES version. And holy crap, he's pretty fucking fast. And the final level is in Japan in this really, really nice looking pagoda. Not really slummy compared to everything else in the Final Fight series. And then you fight the new leader of the Mad Gear Gang, Ritu! whoever the fuck he is, who does a lot of spin kicks and he's on his awesome Japanese sandals. And then you beat him just like you do Belger. And then you rescue Genryu Saiyan Rina. And I do have to admit, this game is not very hard to beat on expert mode and you need to be on expert mode to get the best ending anyways. So I definitely recommend just playing expert mode from the beginning. And of course you rescue Rina and Rina is like, I wish Guy were here, but he's still in his training. And then Mike Hagger's like, I owe Guy so much since he helped me rescue Jessica back in Metro City. Don't worry, Rena, you'll be reunited with Guy soon. And Guy's on a boat saying, I'll be back, my dear. I'll be back. So Final Fight 2, a lot bigger and even way more crazy than the original because, you know, the Mad Gear gang went global and they have all these crazy ass outfits and crazy ass bosses. So, but was bigger better? Um, I admit, I actually like the first one a lot better, even though the second one has two player and, you know, Mackie. But yeah, I do think that Final Fight 2 is a little more over the top, like way over the top than the first Final Fight. And I kind of liked Final Fight 1 better since it was a little more grounded, you know, in the slums of a city rather than being some kind of global thing. And also the good thing is, you know, all three of the characters are very, very fun to play as. You know, Mike Hagar now has the spinning pile driver, which looks amazing. You know, Carlos has his weak ass sword, but he's fun to play as too. And, you know, and Mackie's really, really fast. Although I recommend the first Final Fight a lot more, I do recommend Final Fight 2 a lot since it's two player and even though it's direct to console, it's still a very, very fun game to play. Since Final Fight 2 did not have an arcade release and it's more of a direct to console release, you can find it on the 3DS Virtual Console and hopefully the Nintendo Switch online service. All right guys, so that ends this episode of awesome video game memories about Final Fight 2. So, no! no! Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan. The game we're going to talk about today is Final Fight 3, The Final Frontier. Oh wait, that's not what it's called, but... So, in Final Fight 1, they said, Yeah! And in Final Fight 2, they were like, No! So what do they say in Final Fight 3? Do they say, Maybe so? Oh my god, what do they say? Julio? 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 Yes, I'll take it. I guess maybe that's kind of the distorted Japanese way they say maybe so, like kind of like how Hadouken sounds like Hadouken. Well, so Final Fight 1? Yeah! 
Final Fight 2, no! And Final Fight 3, Julio! So, Final Fight 3, the final, final fight. So many finals, yeah, final fight. Yeah, the final, final, final fight on the Super Nintendo. So does this Final Fight trilogy end with a bang or a whimper? Well, um... Uh... <laughs> so, to be honest, Final Fight 3 is a game that has a ton of great ideas, but the execution is a bit underwhelming in my opinion. So the story of Final Fight 3 is the Mad Gear Gang has finally dissolved after the end of Final Fight 2, and then the remnants of the Mad Gear Gang become the Skull Cross Gang. And so the Skull Cross Gang goes on a rampage in Metro City. But Guy, one of our favorite Final Fight characters, comes back with Mike Hagar. And Mike Hagar now has a ponytail. So Detective Lucia, who's part of the Metro City Police, tells Mike Hagar the Skullcross gang are taking over the city and they're gonna try to free their leader. But then this mysterious guy named Dean, who has shocking powers. But yeah, that's quite a shock. He's probably Blanca's biggest fanboy, like Elick from the previous game. Is like, I'm gonna take down the Skullcross gang because they killed my family. So I want revenge because they're gonna be shocked. So this time you get four playable characters in a two-player game. And one of the new features they actually added in this game is an AI partner. So you actually have a controlled AI partner. So if you were like me as a kid and had no friends to play this game with, you can have an AI partner. Oh boy, I'm having so much fun playing with my AI friend. Maybe you're a girl. So one of the biggest problems I have with this game is they tried to pack so much into this game that the gameplay is really slow. Like, this is like playing turtle version of Final Fight. Up down, too slow, Julio! It's like I'm playing Final Fight at half speed, because there's just so much shit going on on the screen that yeah, it slows the gameplay down to a crawl. And of course, you know, Hagar, Guy, Lucy, and Dean have all their awesome moves. You know, Dean has his electricity move, which is never explained in the game whatsoever because Dean's never come back. And then you have Lucy, who's kind of the fast character. You have Guy, who's the average character, who can actually shoot fireballs now, which is really awesome. And you got Hagar with his amazing spinning pile driver and his grabs. Who do you feel like, man? And also another problem I have with this game is, okay, so Final Fight 1 was kind of grounded to the slums in the city, where Final Fight 2 went over the world and it was quite over the top. Well, Final Fight 3 is very bland. The enemies are bland, the levels are bland and non-memorable. Like, I can't even remember a single punk's name in this game aside from, you know, Ondor. Even Ondor looks like he's bored in this game. He's like, oh, man, I, I like, totally need to get out of the Mad Gear gang because I'm just sick of this shit. Yeah, I mean, all of the enemies just look generic and uninspired. I mean, the bosses are just like, eh, and the enemies are eh, generic street punks. I mean, where's Elgato? Where's Bill Bull? Where's Wong Hu? I mean, where's Elick? Like, where are all the memorable thugs? Like, these are just like the most generic thugs you'll ever see in a fighting game. Like, I'm not kidding. And also this game tries to do multiple paths where if you enter a door, you'll go through a different way, then you'll end up in a different level. But regardless, you'll you'll end up in the same final level where you fight the final boss on the rooftop. Oh, oh god, I hope he's not like super generic or anything because, you know, the Skull Cross gang broke him out of prison. Like he has to be this really, really unique villain. Black. Yes. Black. You fight Black at the end. Well, I gotta admit, uh, he looks like he's a fist of the North Star character. He's probably capable of Hokuto Shinken. Of course, you beat Black and then you throw him into the electricity. Oh, that's quite a shock. And then Metro City is safe again, but Dean leaves. His planet needs him now. He has to go. And Hagar's like, you will always have a home in Metro City, even though you probably don't have a job. But I think your electric powers could help at, you know, the power plant or something. So Final Fight 3 was released very late into the Super Nintendo's lifespan in 1995, so pretty much everyone was getting into PlayStation and the N64 a year later, so Final Fight 3 didn't really sell very well, and it's kind of hard to find. It's really, really expensive. 
So does the Final Fight trilogy end with a bang or a whimper? I would say it kind of ends with a whimper because Final Fight 3 had a lot of great ideas. You know, you had four playable characters, you had an AI partner, you had a two player back, you know, you're back in Metro City, kind of grounded down to earth. But in my opinion, all of it just comes off very bland and it feels very uninspired. But I do recommend the game regardless, because it is part of the Final Fight trilogy on the Super Nintendo, and it's fun to play regardless of the slowdown. Fortunately, since Final Fight 3 was released very late into the Super Nintendo's lifespan, it is very, very expensive on eBay to get an original cartridge, so I highly recommend getting it on the 3DS Virtual Console or the Wii U Virtual Console. Alright guys, so that ends this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Final Fight 3. So, we go, yeah! Then no and who Hey everybody, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribe, and make sure to click on that notification bell so you know when we release new videos because YouTube's probably not gonna tell you. And if you wanna see me play games live, make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash battlegeekplus, and if you have a Twitch Prime account, make sure to subscribe so you can get awesome perks like subscriber badges and much more. And if you want to support us, make sure to support us on Patreon.com slash Ryan Molina because every dollar helps me bring you a better show. And also make sure to follow me on Twitter at ThatRyanMolina and at BattleGeekPlus. And also make sure to check out the official BattleGeekPlus website for a complete listing of our books, merchandise, t-shirts, and a lot more. Alright, thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out these other videos right here. Thanks and take care.